Welcome to Shepherd of Life Lutheran Church. I'm Jennifer Garcia. <laughs> I think you all know me. <laughs> but it's lovely to see you on this beautiful morning. It's still chilly, but a little bit, a uh, little bit less uh, damp than it's been. Uh, a few announcements. Um, we are trying to make plans for Ash Wednesday, um, so we're. We want to kind of take a poll, so talk to either Chris or me <laughs> after the service, and let us know if you'd prefer um, in person or online. Uh, we were thinking of possibly doing in person around noon, uh, or online maybe in the evening, or both. So let us know which you'd prefer, uh, or if you'd rather have both options. We will be doing a Lenten study on Wednesday nights, following Ash Wednesday, <laughs> um, so six o'clock online on Webex. Um, we are um, going through an ELCA uh, World Hunger um, devotional, so that should be um, uh, very appropriate in a time when hunger is, a, is even more of a uh, concern than it normally is because of, because of the pandemic. Um, Sandy uh, would like to see if anybody is able to help her hang a sign sometime this week. She's gotten a... Um, a nice purple one with the picture of the stained glass window uh, for us to put up, but uh, it is easier with multiple people. So please get in touch with her if you're available you this week. Up there? Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, up, up so that um, people driving by can see. Um, I th oh, and um, also we are uh, doing a, a drive for ELCA uh, good gifts, uh, as uh, Sandy talked about last week. So. Um, if you make a donation online, you can, um, we've got Valentine's in the, in the Rose Room uh, for you to send to people to let them know that uh, you are donating in their honor. Uh, so, uh, and uh, next week, if you want to bring in a picture of that person, either a memorial for somebody or some kind of token, uh, or just there, um, Sandy's got something planned for us to uh, hang on the bulletin board uh, to kind of give us a visual reminder of, um, uh, our collective efforts. Are there any other announcements? Did I miss anything? I just want to remind everybody that congregation meeting is next Sunday oh, yes. at the, at the seven, on the 7th. Yes, congregational meeting next Sunday uh, right after church <laughs> uh, here on the patio. Uh, wonderful. All right, I think we're ready for our opening music.
blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word you claim us as children of God, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all with you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading is from Deuteronomy. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is 111. I'll read the light print, and you will read the dark print, and it's in your bulletin. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, honored by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor. Mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works, and you gave them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You set, sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food, sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. 
hints as to the eating of food offered to idols. You know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom we whom all are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For others see you, who possess knowledge, eating the temple of an idol. Might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel comes from Mark chapter 1. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. There's an interesting theme in the Gospel of Mark. It's called the Messianic Secret. Uh, throughout this Gospel, and more so than in other Gospels, uh, Jesus tries to keep his identity as the Messiah a secret. He keeps telling people he healed not to tell anyone, and in this story he tells the, uh, the demon to be quiet after he shouts out who Jesus is. And we as the audience know who Jesus is. It's the very first line of this gospel, that it's the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But within the gospel story, Jesus keeps telling people to be quiet about it, all the way until his death on the cross, when the temple curtain is ripped in two, and there's no longer any question that Jesus is the Messiah. But in today's story, the news is still hush-hush. Jesus and his newly collected disciples go to the synagogue on the Sabbath, and Jesus begins to preach. And he gets the attention of the congregation. This guy's really something. He seems to really know his stuff, and there's something different about him. Just then, this guy comes in, and the demon inside him starts shouting, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Names are important in the Bible, and there's a lot of mythology in general about names having power over people uh, and being able to use names to gain power over people. But this demon, though it addresses Jesus, doesn't seem to truly understand what he's dealing with because Jesus just shuts him up and casts him out. It happens dramatically, but immediately. This demon has nothing on Jesus' authority, 
And so the messianic secret is secret again, for now. Except that everyone who's there in the synagogue starts talking about it. <laughs> uh, and the people who encounter Jesus don't seem good at uh, keeping the messianic secret. For us, though, it can be a little too easy to keep the messianic secret, even though it wasn't meant to be a secret anymore after Jesus' death and resurrection. The thought of sharing the good news can be pretty scary. It's hard to put ourselves out there. We don't want to be pushy or preachy. Most of us would rather not pass out tracts or go door to door asking if people know about Jesus. In beautifully diverse Southern California, it's safe to assume that many of our neighbors have deep roots in other faith traditions and that many people have been burned by well-meaning Christians. It can be challenging to be bold in sharing our faith while also being respectful of our neighbors' faiths and their experiences. But surprisingly, even as Jesus is trying to keep his messianic identity a secret, we can learn something in our reading about sharing the good news. Even though Jesus silences the demon, the man who is possessed will surely never forget Jesus. Jesus had compassion on someone who was suffering and acted to ease that suffering. And despite Jesus' best efforts to keep the messianic secret, the demon-possessed man knew who Jesus was. We don't know what happened to him after that, but it's probably safe to say that somebody at some point asked him what happened, and I imagine he told them. So much for the messianic secret. Sharing our faith can be a simple conversation like that. It doesn't have to be dramatic or follow a specific plan. Evangelism looks a whole bunch of different ways throughout the Bible. It doesn't have to look like standing on street corners holding signs and megaphones. We're following in the footsteps of our compassionate Savior, who had mercy on a suffering person in the synagogue that Sabbath. Sometimes evangelism can look like having compassion. But it can't stop there. There are plenty of compassionate people in our world who have no faith tradition. And there are plenty of secular nonprofits that do amazing work to ease suffering in the world. Christianity does not have a market on, or have a corner on the compassion market. So, what sets the church apart from? a really effective secular nonprofit. Jesus. It's not enough to have compassion and ease suffering in the world, though we should be doing those things. We need to point back to our compassionate Savior as the reason why we do these things. There's a quote attributed to St. Francis uh, that says something like, um, preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. And it's a good reminder to walk the walk and not just talk the talk, but it can also be used to excuse not talking the talk. We need to do both. We need to follow in Jesus' example of loving people and then telling them why we're, that we're doing it because Jesus first loved us. We're kicking off a pretty approachable way of doing this right now. I shared earlier that we're doing a coordinated effort to support ELCA Good Gifts. Uh, it provides a wide variety of support, from livestock to medicine to education and all kinds of other things, uh, to people in the U.S. and around the world. And Shepherd of Life is providing Valentine's, so then after you do that compassionate work, you can tell people that you did it because of your compassionate Savior that Jesus has shown you love to the extent that you want to love others. This is one way to follow in Jesus' example and share your faith. As I said, there are tons of examples throughout the Bible that look really different, uh, from giving testimony in court to hopping in somebody's chariot and explaining the book of Isaiah. <laughs> so I encourage you as you read through your Bible and as we read the, through the Bible together here at church, to look for examples of how evangelism 
maybe doesn't look the way you expect it to. <laughs> and I can encourage you to consider donating to ELCA World, uh, ELCA Good Gifts and using the Valentine to share with some, someone that it's your faith in Jesus that makes you want to share Jesus' compassionate love with the world. The Messianic secret should no longer be a secret, and we have an opportunity to spread the word and spread the love. Let's show the world that we follow a compassionate Savior. Amen. Amen. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of society, civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, let us pray. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, or not so much, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, and for other needs in our community, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, in thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the hosts in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for all, to, and gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me." Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me." We join in prayer as our Lord taught us. After the most cycles go by. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I invite you to take your little communion cups and peel back the wrapper. This is the body of Christ given for you. When you're ready, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.